Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to philosophers versus scholars, intellect versus revelation. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When we search for the meaning of life, truth, right and wrong, there's basically two main things that you'll come across if you look at history, if you look at philosophy, if you look at the world religions. You have human conjecture, human beings trying to figure it out for themselves, and you have divine revelation. You have the belief that the creator, the all-knowing, the all-powerful, sent revelation to us and informed us of the meaning of life, of truth, of right and wrong. These are the two main things that you'll come across. Now me personally, when I was searching for the meaning of life, I said to myself, you know what, conjecture doesn't hold a lot of weight with me. Because human beings were wrong all the time, philosophies are conflicting, how can a human being really just sit and ponder and figure out how they got here, what happens when they die, and their true purpose in life? Just based on their own intellect, right? I was like, no, it makes far more sense that we have a, a divine creator who's all-knowing, who has the most perfect names and attributes. And if he communicated with us, if he told us our purpose and what happens when we die and how we got here and things of that nature, what's right and wrong, that's the way to go, obviously. So I put the, all the philosophy, the human conjecture to the side, and I started looking at different religions that claim to have divine origins, that claim that God, the creator, revealed scriptures to them, communicated with prophets. But as I was studying this, I realized that these scriptures haven't been preserved. We don't know who actually authored these books. I mean, the stories, there, there could be truth to them, there could be falsehood. We even know that if you look at the scriptures over time, things have been added and changed and manipulated, right? And this is the case for everything except for Islam. Islam is the one religion that claims to be divine, that has divine origins, and you can back it up with its preservation. Not to mention just the fact that, I mean, you can just read it and understand it and see if Allah guides you, that this isn't, a human being couldn't have come up with this. So, Islam is extremely special and unique in that regard. It's been preserved. This is revelation from Lord of the worlds, from the Creator, the All-Knowing. This is from Him. This is Him telling us how we need to live our life, what's right, what's wrong, what happens when we die. And He preserved it for us. It's not like these other religions that haven't been preserved. And if you look at the preservation of Islam, of the Qur'an, of the Sunnah, there's nothing like it. There's, there's nothing else in the entire world that has the sort of preservation, the, the type of science that this religion has. And this is, of course, a, a huge blessing from Allah upon us because he knew that the Prophet ﷺ, Muhammad, he would be the last prophet, the Qur'an is the last scripture, that this is the guidance from their time until the Day of Judgment. So he preserved it for us. So, what's unique about it has been preserved and we need to go back to it so that we can understand the reality of life. Now, what happens over time? Sometimes people, they begin to prefer their intellect over the revelation. This is something that happened to past nations and this is something that we've seen Muslims, unfortunately, fall victim to in the past and in the present. Instead of going back and saying, okay, what does Allah tell us? What does the messenger say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What do the companions, how did they understand this? What did they teach? How did they practice the deen? Over time, people, they, they start to prefer their intellect over the revelation and start to think, well, you know what? That doesn't make sense to my intellect. Therefore, I'm going to say, I'm going to bring forth something new, something that the prophet and his companions, they never brought forth. And this is when things start getting problematic. 
And we see a lot of this today. We see a lot of new ways of interpreting the Quran and the Sunnah and Islam that never came before from the, the origins of our deen that Allah preserved for us. It's new. And this is very problematic. This is how you go astray. Now, who is the best of this ummah after the Prophet wasallam? Abu Bakr. May Allah be pleased with him. Did Abu Bakr, did he prefer his intellect over the revelation? Well, there's the famous story when the, the Prophet Muhammad made the Isra wal Mi'raj. He made the night journey from Mecca to Beit al Maqdis in Jerusalem and he ascended to the heavens. And the next day, when word got to the Kufar, the disbelievers, what did they do? They ran to Abu Bakr and they said, You know what, what Muhammad is saying? He's saying that last night he traveled all the way from, from Mecca all the way to Jerusalem. What do you have to say about this? What was Abu Bakr's response? He said, if the Prophet والسلام, said this, <laughs> then it's true. Why? Because he preferred, he preferred revelation over his own intellect. And the funny thing is, if you look further into what Abu Bakr said, it actually doesn't even conflict with your intellect because he said, I believe something far greater than, than this, than him traveling from Mecca to Jerusalem in a night. I believe he gets revelation from the Lord of the Worlds. So if you think about it, it doesn't even really conflict with your intellect if you have, if Allah blessed you with true intellect. It makes sense that you would prefer revelation from Allah over your own human flawed conjecture. And this is why Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was a siddiq He was the best of this ummah after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And furthermore, Ali radiallahu anhu, another great companion from the greatest of this ummah, he famously said that if this deen was from our own opinion and conjecture, we would, we would wipe over the bottom of our socks instead of the top. However, we saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam wiping over the top, so we follow, we follow him. This was the understanding of the companions, the greatest generation. They did not prefer their intellect over the revelation. And in fact, as I said, that that's, that's true intellect in and of itself, to prefer revelation over your own conjecture. So over time, what we've seen is, if you think of al sirat al-Mustaqim, if you think of the straight path that the Prophet والسلام, was on and his companions, may Allah be pleased with them. It's a straight path from their time until the day of judgment. It's a straight path. And over time, groups have come forth and they've brought, they've innovated. They brought forth new things, new understandings, new principles that weren't from the Quran and Sunnah and the companions. So if you think about this, think about a straight path. Over time, you had people come and, for example, make an exit, okay? They say, okay, you know what? Everyone should turn left here because we thought about it and we came to the conclusion that when it comes to this principle, when it comes to, for example, Allah's attributes, that we should actually deny them. And they start calling to a different path. Okay, let's say a couple miles further, there's another exit that somebody brought forth. And they said, you know what? We thought about it. And when it comes to Allah's Qadr, we deny it because our intellect. So, you guys should come this way. So what did the, the scholars of Ahl Sunnah do? What did they do? They're calling, of course, to al sirat al-Mustaqim, to the straight path. So what they do, when they start explaining directions, for example, the directions on how to remain on the straight path, they will warn from those exits. They will warn, they will put up roadblocks and say, look, when you're traveling on the straight path, you might come across groups saying this about Allah's attributes, or saying this about Allah's qadr, or saying this about iman. They're wrong, they've deviated. They are calling to misguidance, and they put up roadblocks. That doesn't mean that they're bringing something new. That doesn't mean that they are trying to develop a new science due to their intellect. This doesn't mean that Allah didn't preserve the Quran and Sunnah. But on the contrary, Allah has preserved it, and this is a means of preservation. 
that when scholars bring up these deviations, they're not bringing forth something new. They are warning you from going astray. They're warning you from these groups that are bringing forth something new. So nowadays, it's a shame that we have people who are preferring their intellect over the revelation. And not only that, but they are acting as if those scholars who have always called people to the straight path, that it, they're trying to make it seem as if that is, as if there was a fork in the road, as if there was a fork in the road. And we don't know, we don't know the straight path anymore. Maybe it's to the left, maybe it's to the right. And unfortunately, some people are fooled by this. They think, oh, okay, well, I can go left, I can go right. What's the difference? There's a fork in the road, the straight path hasn't been preserved. However, this is a false understanding. Allah preserved the Quran and the Sunnah, and the straight path, it's clear. And these deviations, these deviant groups that came forth, it's clear how they deviated. If you look into it, if you study it. So, basically, what we need to be aware of is that when people start preferring their intellect over revelation is very dangerous and there are clear signs when you see people doing this when you see famous du'at for example and they give so much credit to non-muslim scholars for example to philosophy to non-muslim institutions and they belittle the preservation of islam of the proper understanding, the aqidah, the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that has been preserved. You should have some warning. There, there are warning signs. I mean, we have, I, I've heard in the past, now, now that I, alhamdulillah I've studied the deen, when I go back and I watch certain du'at that I, I listen to as a new Muslim, I mean, I would, I would hear a tafsir, for example, there, there's a, a da'i teaching tafsir, and the entire tafsir is just him talking about philosophy, talking about sports, just rambling. People who <laughs> use symbolism and all of this sort of like abstract um, interpretations that aren't from the the Quran and Sunnah and companions. I mean, this is something to beware of. There are people actually. Just recently, just now, they are teaching philosophy books in their Islamic institutions. They have interviews where you can see how much they love philosophy and philosophers. This is something to beware of because unfortunately some people, they are afflicted with a love for philosophy, for human intellect, and they begin they begin preferring that over the revelation. This is not from Ahlul Sunnah al-Jama'ah. And the last thing I want to mention is, uh, I think, a very good example of somebody who refutes philosophy and talks about it and teaches it, but they do it in a way that shows the superiority of Islam is Daniel Haqiqaju. I think if you look at Alasna Institute, if you take classes with him, and if you read his posts, his articles, um, you know, as far as I have seen, he does a great job of showing how Islam is so far superior. And you will find that many people, unfortunately, they don't, they don't, when they talk about philosophy, when they talk about Western institutions and scholarship and so-called Western intellectuals and non-Muslim so-called intellectuals, they are, they don't come across the same way Daniel does. But rather, they give so much um, credit and love and support to um, philosophy and to these Western intellectual ideas and they actually even start judging the Dean based on their morals and their um, philosophies but if you look at what the way Daniel teaches it's as if it's it's you know he, he gets blowback from certain people because the day that we're living in the age that we're living in so many people have strayed from preferring revelation over uh, modern philosophy that he comes across as extreme to people. So, you know, we live in a time where he says something like, Sharia, the Sharia, the law of Allah, it is superior over man-made laws and anything that conflicts with the Sharia is misguidance. 
I mean, subhanAllah, we live in a time where you even have so-called Muslims going against that, preaching against the Sharia. That's the time that we live in. Why do they do that? They do that because they are preferring intellect and they, they have this inferiority complex or these desires or whatever Allah knows best, but they do not prefer revelation over human conjecture in this day and age, clearly. Whereas Daniel Hakikachu, he is, you can, from what I've seen from his work, and I just use him as an example, if you want to go see what it looks like for somebody who has studied philosophy and the way that Muslims should view it is, you know, for lack of a better example, it's like Islam is a gold brick and philosophy is a pile of feces. And, and it's like, <laughs> the vibe I get from Daniel is he's like, you guys are seriously preferring this feces over this gold brick? I mean, that's how in your face and un unapologetic he is about it. And I mean, that's the reality. How are you going, are you going to prefer that which is worse over that which is better? Are you going to prefer the philosophy and the conjecture of disbelievers over the guidance of the Lord of the worlds? The guidance of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his companions, may Allah be pleased with them. So, you know, that does it for this rant. I hope uh, you found it to be beneficial. It's just something I wanted to point out. This, this deen has been preserved. Okay, and true knowledge is going back to the revelation. So when you, when you hear people doubting that it's been preserved, they're calling to misguidance. And when you, when you find people preferring their intellect, um, especially when it goes against the Quran and Sunnah, this is clear misguidance. So may Allah protect us, may Allah guide all of us and keep us firm on the truth. Jazakum Allahu khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very interesting video. He was calling um, people's, he referred to people choosing their knowledge over anything else as intellect. I would love to refer to it as arrogance. Arrogance. Many people are very, very arrogant. There's people that are out there thinking whatever they believe in is the way of everything. That's why I always, there's a guy that I reacted to and I think I reacted to his video twice. I respect him because of the the way he explained his journey was to Islam. Reason being that I think he was atheist first, but then he looked into all religions and himself, he learned himself without anyone pushing him that Islam was um, his choice of re, uh, religion because he studied everything else. And what made sense to him was this one particular um, religion. So for those people that are out there not open to learning, not wanting to know about other um, religions or anything else in the world, you're going to be your own downfall because you should know something about other religions before you can judge them. Study them. You don't have to become them. You can study them. And no religion is... I don't think any religion is perfect because someone will say, but the Quran shows that Muhammad killed someone. Someone is going to say, but the Bible shows that Jesus allowed the killing of people. Someone is going to say, but Judaism this. Someone is going to say other religions this and that. It's up to you to learn. That's why I say these videos are supposed to make us learn to understand things or see things from someone else's perspective. It's up to us to take this information and say, you know what, let me look into this, see what I find or what I can learn from this religion. Otherwise, love his videos um, and a big shout out to the person that suggested this. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.